Well, this morning, people all across Northeast Florida, specifically here in the city of Jacksonville, are mourning a political trailblazer. Former Mayor Jake Godbold died yesterday morning of a heart attack. He was 86. Godbold was a huge part of Jacksonville's history and was instrumental in shaping the city into what it is today. He did so much. He was key to bringing the Jaguars to town. Here's video of Godbold here at Channel 4 when it was announced that the Jags were officially coming to the River City. Joining us now in studio to talk more about the man's life and legacy, John Pelosi, the former Fraternal Order of Police President. I know that you worked hand in hand with him. You had a professional relationship as well as a personal one, John. I did that and uh, I met Jake uh, after my election in 1979 as uh, FOP president. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't uh, support him in the beginning of it. We weren't really that active in politics. He made sure we met real quick. Um, he brought me to his office um, and he said, we're, we're going to look at this police work. He said, we're going to look at the status of police officers. You know, back in those days when we came on, I came on 1972, we didn't make $8,000 a year. Wow. 1972. Wow. And, uh, Dale Carson always said that if he had it his way, he would get wages up to 10000 a year. Well, unfortunately, we lost Dale Carson, and we, never, we didn't achieve that under his mm -hmm. time. But under Jake, we started moving in a much better direction. Mm -hmm. He worked hard for us, and, and we appreciated every moment we spent with him. And he knew that supporting first responders was ultimately supporting his constituents and making them safer and happier. Absolutely. This is a big city, uh, really spread out from consolidation, and, and Jake was was really wanting to put his finger on every part of it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about him being a man of the people. He wasn't someone that was too high to talk to any person. Literally, if you went up to him, you had an issue, he was going to listen and he was going to do his best. And he did listen. Uh, there were many times we had lunch together, myself and Gary Keyes, a former uh, mm -hmm. president of the Firefighters Union, and people would come up and, and he, he never never hesitated to greet them and listen to what they had to say. Sometimes they were short conversations. Sometimes they lasted a little longer. It didn't matter to him because uh, he cared about what they had to say. He had a larger than life personality. I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times, interviewing him a few times, and when you met him, you just knew that he was somebody out of the ordinary. He was the real word genuine. Um, we. Uh, started off in our relationship, uh, he sent me to Kansas City to preview the Michael Jackson show. Mm -hmm. uh, we, he was uh, interested in, in knowing what the security layout would be. We went to Arrowhead Stadium, we spent some days there, and we looked at the entire setup, myself and, and then Gary Keyes, as he, was, he was the chief of, of firefighters then. And uh, we, we came back and, and uh, got ready. We were the third venue. That, uh, when they finished in Kansas, they went to uh, D uh, Dallas mm -hmm. and then on to Jacksonville. And um, they spent about five days here setting up, and it was really something. He came by frequently, uh, mm -hmm. wanted to see mm -hmm. how, how the progress was going. Was there for the first show that night. It, it was quite a show. Mm -hmm. and it was um, a good crowd. We didn't sell out the first couple of times, but the third night was, and uh, uh, he was grateful to see. And, it, that, you know, that was the first really huge event. We had the Georgia-Florida game. Sure and the Gator Bowl, but we didn't have major events. And then it just seemed to light a fire. And one of his favorites was um, in the uh, Metropolitan Park. We had a festival every year, and he would do everything in his power to bring the Beach Boys. They were his favorite group. Okay. <laughs> and, you, and you can reflect back on that because they were a really hot number, and they, and they would fill Metropolitan Park sure. just, just because of his interest. Sure. Truly a, a man of passion, and he wanted the city to have fun. Obviously, he cared about safety. He cared about development, but he wanted the city to have fun when it came to all of these concerts, all of these special events, and most importantly, probably for a lot of people, the Jaguars and, and NFL team. And that's very true. He, um, he never missed a Bulls game. I was the chief of security back then, and uh, he, he, uh, he would open his box up, People came up there on, on that floor where the sky boxes were, and his box never had a closed door, never. Mm. And uh, I uh, remarked back to uh, his days of uh, the reason, one of the reasons he was so involved with law enforcement was he knew people had to be safe coming to these events that he right. sponsored. And that was the most important part. And he would stop and talk to the officers. 
John, thank you for your time. Thank you for your memories. I know that you will miss him sorely, as will so many people in the community. But we can all smile at the life and legacy and of we Jane Gobble. We'll be right back.